Hello everyone and welcome to Cisco Wireless Technologies. My name is Chris Avance. I'm going to be your instructor and your guide and hopefully your friend throughout this entire uh, series. So our goal is to teach you all the required learning objectives for the Cisco CCNA wireless certification and then a little bit more. You've noticed I have 2.5. That's not an official number from Cisco. That's my own number and I'll explain why in a moment. First, let me give you a little bit of background about me. Okay, first of all, uh, Chris Avance, like I said, I have been working with Cisco Technologies for uh, quite some time, around 18 years now. I started when I was 17 with GE Capital IT Solutions. Um, whenever I'm not plugged in and I'm not connected, uh, I, uh, I, I'm passionate about, of course, my family. Uh, I love uh, anything outdoors. I, I like to disconnect, basically. So if I'm not connected, I like to disconnect, right? Uh, music, um, before I was in IT, I was going to be a rock star. What do you know? So what should you know coming into this class? Well, here's the thing. Um, it's called a CCNA wireless, but technically, I really only need you to have a CCNA level uh, foundation of understanding to be in this class. So what that means is, uh, Chris, what do you mean? Well, you no longer have to be a CCNA to gain your CCNA wireless certification. You can be a CCNT, which is the Cisco Certified Entry Network Technician, and then um, you still get your CCNA wireless. So that's the way it is nowadays. So, but I do need you to have that level of understanding before uh, you really dive into this class or else there could be some topics that, that are going to be, you know, out there for you, okay? So, you know, if you thought dealing with IP and frames was bad, well, you know, we could have up to four MAC addresses and, and wireless. So, you know, it, it messes with people a little bit. And there's a, also a lot of RF mechanics. Um, but anyway, knowing, you know, the foundation, LAN switch, uh, you know, switch and route technologies are going to greatly help you throughout this entire class, okay, I promise you. So, uh, hopefully you've brushed up on that, and maybe you're, you know, you're like, Chris, I'm a CCNP, uh, I just want to know wireless. Well, great for you, you've got the foundation required, and we're going we're gonna to get you that wireless knowledge as well. Little known secret is, is Cisco is not um, shy about telling you what they want you to know to pass their exams. They know that it's tough enough to learn, uh, you know, those objectives to pass their exams. So, anyway, um, I, I always get the exam objectives from here, and this gives me my, my foundation. So uh, I downloaded what you need to know to accomplish the 640-722 uh, Introducing Unified Wireless Network uh, exam. Um, wireless is a diverse, the, the, the knowledge for CCNA wireless is spread across a lot of things. As you can see, there's no really one topic that jumps out other than fundamentals and basic wireless line security, but then you know, installing a, a basic uh, Cisco wireless LAN is still very important. Clients are important. WCS is important. So, you know, really, all of these topics are things you're going to have to know. You know, there's no shortcuts where you could say, okay, I'm just going to focus on these three, you know, components. The, the way Cisco started doing it with their certifications is, is that, you know, they, uh, so the CSENT gets you into the Cisco world, right? We know that. And then your associate level is, and I, and I talked about this in my last few classes as well, but pouring that foundation and then the, as, you, as you go up the ladder or the pyramid, you're solidifying that foundation to the next level. So the, the new CCNA courses are really, they're solidifying the CSENT and the route switch. But um, the thing is, is that you're, you're also pouring on a foundation to go to the professional level as well. So you're, it's, it's a constant building block towards a pyramid, and that's why they use that pyramid in their certifications. But anyway, my point is with wireless, there's going to be a lot of topics, a lot of things. Uh, there's even, you know, RF mechanics in this class and, um, you know, power conversion, all that kind of stuff that we've got to discuss. And so, you know, strap in and, and be prepared to have a, a great, fun time. And here's the thing, I love it because you really do talk about a lot of cool engineering in wireless that, you know, wireless is, is truly an amazing technology and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So if you're here, you're setting yourself up for a great future because wireless is not going anywhere and it's only getting bigger, right? So anyway, uh, this, you know, the goal is to prepare you for this. Whether you're taking the exams or not, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, my goal is to prepare you with the knowledge because if you if you have that level of knowledge to be certified, even if you don't care about it, then you know my job's done. Because if you know the topics required well enough to become certified, then I've taught you the lessons for this, this particular class, right? So 
The exam number, for those of you keeping track, is the 640-722, and this is, of course, an associate level certification. So we'll, we'll talk about where to go up from there, right? Say, Chris, I, I love wireless, if you, and, and I really want to go further. What's next? And uh, I know probably all of you know, know this site, right? But cisco.com forward slash go forward slash certifications. And these are the additional classes after you get your CCNA wireless. So after you get this, this is where we're at. And you say, hey, I want to I go up the, the ladder. Okay, I want to get the uh, professional level. Well, then you've got to take these additional four courses. And it doesn't matter which order you take them in. They're not going to, basically, you need to take them, you need to pass the exam, and then once you pass the exam, it kind of sits there. But the good thing is, is that let's say, you know, six months goes by and then you take the uh, site survey course, right? You pass it, okay? So you pass that, you've renewed uh, your CCNA wireless and your CSENT at that point. So let's say another few months go by and you get this guy, pass it. That you've done the same thing, you've renewed all of them. So my point is, but you have to have all of these to earn the CCNP wireless. Okay, so, and it's fun. Here's the thing, uh, you know, I, I don't want to spend too much time just talking about certification, but with, with all of Cisco's certifications, okay, route switch especially, there is a ton of, and, and it's no short task, okay? They're still in demand, leaps and bounds, but CCNP, the route switch version of the professional level certifications is by far the biggest number of certified candidates out there. And then probably right after that, security, after that, wireless, uh, okay, or, or after that, sorry, voice. Wireless is actually one of the areas where people think, oh, I can just go and install that. That's not a big deal. It's using a controller and the APs do some things to, you know, it's not too hard to deploy. Well, here's the news, fellas, is that there is a lot going on with wireless, okay? I do collaboration also, and there is just as much technologies going on with wireless as there is with collaboration to do it right. Let's put it that way. Yes, it's not hard to go out and plug in APs. And where wireless gets this conception that it's not hard is from going and buying a home Linksys router, right? Or a Netgear router. And then you plug that in and it's got wireless and everybody's connected. But enterprise wireless is a much different story, okay? We've got security risks to, to watch out for. We've got quality of service. Yes, quality of service over wireless. It, to prioritize voice and video traffic, okay? We've got all different types of things, mobility services, content, I mean, there's a lot to wireless and doing it right. That's my point. And so people don't realize that. And then once they start taking the wireless stuff, they're like, man, there's way too much to this. I'm getting out of here. So you need to be passionate about it. And hopefully you are. But this class, there's so many great foundational lessons about wireless and even electricity and power that we're going to be covering. It's, it's, it's a fun class. So uh, like I said, hope you're excited. So after this class, you're going to go, hopefully, well, it's up to you, right? Um, but if your goal is to take the exam, you got to go to the, back to the Pearson view where you took your CSENT or your CCNA and register for the 640-722. It's uh, 250, okay? I believe, yeah, it's 250. 75 to 85 questions, and then um, 800 to 850 is a passing score. The actual score to pass is not published, and you get 90 minutes. So um, basically, it's, it's a minute a question, something like that. But uh, you need to, you know, if you're going to be in wireless and you're going to be an RF engineer, it's important to understand all the mechanics of it, which is, you know, part of what we're going to be discussing in this class. So anyway. Um, like I said, I'm extremely excited to have you guys uh, here this week. Wireless is a great, fun topic. And uh, by the way, this here is going to be some of the equipment we're using this week. I've got uh, 4400 series wireless controller, 3750 switches, some clean air APs, some, uh, some old mood ring APs, uh, 1130 series. And so we're, we're going to be playing with all this stuff. But I'm also going to show you guys how to um, build a home lab as well if you want. Because here's the thing, with other Cisco technologies, right? Route switch, you've got GNS3, it makes things you know, cheap to build a home lab. But things like data center and voice and wireless, you've gotta have some equipment, right? Well, here's the thing, you can, um, 
you can purchase, uh, I can, well, let's put it this way. You can download most of the software you need to manage a, a wireless architecture virtually. And then you can buy some of these APs, the ones with the mood ring, for like 30 bucks on eBay. And you can do most of all these labs yourself at home if you want. I'm going to do examples here so you can watch and study. But I'm also going to show you guys how if you want to set up the virtual lab, you can buy a few APs. You've got your own home uh, unified uh, wireless network. So we're going to talk about that. Anyway, without further ado, no more talking about chit chat. Let's get started on the exam topics and I will see you in there.